Are you someone who is joining a technology team but do not know the ABC of technology? Or are you someone who is working in a tech company and keep on hearing terms that you can't even make the head or tail of? In this series, I will try to match your skills to those of those engineers that you constantly engage with. Well, if not match, we will at least try to give you enough skills that you can pretend to know what they are talking about. Hi guys, my name is Arushi and I have about 6 plus years of experience building tech products. I have worked unicorns across India and Dubai and I am right now working as a senior product manager in Noon which is the largest e-commerce player in the MENA region. Many of you have reached out to me asking me for resources on how you can prepare yourself for day one of your job working in a technical company. This video is a part of a two video series where we will be covering all the terms that you should know while you are joining a technical team. These terms will help you engage or understand the conversations with software developers much better. So in spirit of full disclosure, these are the 10 terms that we will cover in these two videos. If you want me to talk about any other key term as well, please share in the comment section below and I'll try to engage with you in the comment section or do a video later about it as well. So the first term is API. API or Application Programming Interface. API is one of the most commonly used terms in the tech world and it's a very simple one as well. APIs are essentially ways through which one system connects to another. For example, I was trying to call you on your mobile phone. What will I do? I'll add your ISD code, then I'll add your mobile number and I'll press the green button to make the call to you. In this case, what happens is your phone interacts with the network provider and gives this information in the form of ISD code and the mobile number and the network provider then tries to engage with your uh, network provider so as to connect your phone to mine. Now what happened here was that there were three services. First is my phone, the second is my network provider, the third is your network provider. Now each of these services spoke to one another using a thing called API. An API is basically a contract that just speak to one another. Now my mobile phone did some complex calculation or did some complex um, programming where it took in the number from me and allowed me to click the green button. But after that was done, it had the job of connecting with my network provider which was an external call done through an API. Conclusion, an API is just a way two or more systems interact with one another. Coming to the second one, webhooks. Webhooks are user-defined callbacks. Webhooks are a little opposite to general APIs. So a general API would tell the next API or tell the next system if there's any change in its configuration. However, in the case of webhooks, the next system itself keeps listening to the previous one and keep noticing in case there's any change to any state and in case that change happens, the next system itself through the webhooks understands it and makes it just change to itself. This is very similar to how broadcasting works. For example, the government in your country would make certain changes, would make certain amendments and broadcast it through news or through its websites. Now once the citizens, they understand the new rule that has come in place, you then change yourself according to that rule. This is exactly what webhooks are. Webhooks are just listeners to what has changed in the rule book, what has changed in the world, and then we'll make changes to our systems accordingly. Now I'm clubbing the next two together, backend server side or the front end client side. Now any system usually has three pieces. The first one is the database where the actual data sits. The second is the backend or the server side, which basically has all the complex logic about what we have to do with the data. And the next front end or client side is basically where the visualization is handled. So let's take an example. Let's say you went to the Gmail app to send an email. Now what is it that you will do? First, you will click on the app button and you'll land on the Gmail app. Second, you'll click on the create mail button and land onto the place where you can actually compose your email. Once you've composed your email, you'll put in the list of your recipients and click on the send button. Now here's what really happened here. When you went to the app and you clicked on the create email button and you landed onto the place where you can actually write your email, those were all front end events because this was just trying to determine which button leads to what page. However, after you had put in all your recipient email IDs and you clicked on the button send, the front end or the client side reached out to the server side or the back end to tell them to do the act of sending email for this front end. Now the server or the back end actually did the job of sending out these emails to all the recipients. 
I hope this makes it clear to you the difference between front end or the client side and the back end and the server side. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching so far. Stay tuned for the second video in this series, which will talk about more technical concepts and help you gain your footing as a non-technical person in a technical team. Please mention on the comment section below if you have any doubts or if you have any questions for me. I'll be happy to engage with you and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.